Hi, my name is Dakota Dayweiler, and this is my very first painting tutorial. I paint with water mixable oils, but you're welcome to use oils or acrylic, whichever you're more comfortable with. You can find a sketch of this bear and a list of items you'll need on my Facebook page, Paintings by Dakota Dayweiler. Let's get started. So let's go ahead and start with back here behind all the trees. We're going to use just a little bit of white and touch, touch of blue, just barely any, and some black, but that, not that much black, that's too much. Alright, so something like that. And go ahead and get some water or linseed oil, depending on what you're using. So for the next part, we're going to use that same gray color we just used. Just add in a little bit more black, darken it up, and add in some brown. We're going to get kind of a weird grayish brown white color. And we're going to do some of the trees in the background. So these trees are going to look far away because they're really light in color. And all you're going to do for this part is Start at the bottom and run your brush all the way up. I'm actually going to make it a little bit lighter than that, it's too dark. Grab a smaller detail brush. And you're going to want to use that same color you just used. Add it just a little bit more black so it's a tiny bit darker. And add in some branches. Okay, so next we're gonna make kind of a dark green color. So just take some of your green, forest green color that you have on your palette and add in a tiny bit of black. I mean, you don't want it to be too dark. You still want it to be able to tell it's green, but it won't be a bright green. We're gonna use our fan brush. We're gonna go ahead and make some of the leaves back there, but they're not gonna cover everything. You're just gonna have them in random spots. Kind of like that. And some of them are going to be in front of the tree, some of them are going to be on the sides.
All right, that's a pretty good start. So I'm gonna just use that same brush and rinse it off a little bit. And now I'm gonna add in some yellow and some white to that same green mixture, just to lighten it up, kind of a lemon yellow, bright white. And that's just gonna make it like a lighter color of green. And I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna add some highlights to the green we just added here. So that's not quite light enough, so I'm gonna lighten it up even more. And this is just really subtle. But it's just gonna look like the sun is hitting it a little bit. Even though it's foggy, you still have shadows and highlights on things. So I'm going to go back to my large flat brush, this guy, and I'm going to grab some black, brown, and a little bit of white. And I'm going to throw some red in there, just because I like trees that have a little bit of red in them from Humboldt, of course. So what we're going to do now is paint in the trees that we want to look really close. So there's this one here that I didn't paint. And you can make these wherever you want them to be. Find your detail brush again, kind of a medium detail, thin, pointy brush. We're going to use that same dark red, black, brown mixture, and we're going to make some branches on these front ones. Next, I am going to add some highlights to these tree trunks, um, not the ones in the back, they're kind of just going to be flat because they're pretty foggy back there, I'm just going to leave them be, but the ones in the front need to have highlights and low lights because you, you would see the ones in the front where the sun was hitting them. So I'm going to take that same dark color we were just working with on these trees and add in just a little bit of white and a little bit of red, maybe a touch of yellow. Kind of like a weird burnt orange-ish color. And what I'm going to do is just find the side that I want the sun to be coming from. I'm going to add in some highlights just on that side of the trunk.
highlights. Now we're gonna go around the back side of the tree, the other side. So we're gonna take that same color and kind of mix it in with the original brown that we used. It's kind of like an in-between color. And do the same thing along the back side. This is really, really subtle. You're not gonna see a whole lot of definition here, but it just gives it more depth. So now what I like to do with trees is I like to go back with jet black, so just pure black. And we're going to add in some really, really dark, deep crevices. But these, you're not going to do a lot of them, just a couple. So these are going to look like really deep knots in the tree. And it kind of just gives it more depth. So I actually want to do a couple more branches on these two. The world seems small. We can sit together. It's so beautiful. You and me. We meant to be. So back to the fan brush, this guy, and we're going to do some moss on these trees. So I'm going to take my white and I'm going to add in some of this kind of ugly sap green is what I call it, some lemon yellow until I get the color I want. It's kind of not there yet, a little bit more white. And I'm going to go through and just pick some spots where I think moss would be growing. And you just tap lightly a couple of times. Don't cover up all your details you just did. Just a couple. That's good for those trees, I think. Let's start working on the bottom. So. All I'm gonna do is grab a big thick brush. It doesn't matter if it's flat or round. I, I just grabbed this one. And I'm just gonna do pure black on the bottom for now, just to start out with. And you're gonna want it to be pretty thin, especially if you're working with oils. Um, acrylics too, because then it, it'll dry quicker and you can move on and do the next layer. So next we're gonna paint in this log over here. Um, the one that he's standing on or climbing on, I guess. So we're just going to get some red, black, and brown. We don't want it to be quite as dark as this because it's closer, so it's going to be a little bit lighter. We 
we are going to make some def defining points on these boulders. So kind of this color we're working with over here, I'm going to add a little bit of white to it so it's a little bit lighter. Not a lot. And just going to go and make some peaks. So go along the tops where the sun would be hitting. It's kind of just mapped out. Then I'm going to take my fan brush and some a couple of different green colors, whichever ones you have. Forest green, sap green, phthalo green. Mix them in until you get kind of a mi middle tone. Kind of a darker, dark moss color. So we're gonna do the dark moss color first and then we're gonna do highlights on top of that, just like we did over here. So for this part, I'm gonna use flat brush. It's kind of big. And I'm gonna use some white, some red, some yellow. I'm gonna make a little bit of bark up here. These are really textured, so I'm not using swipes, I'm using dabs. Just go like this. And again, you want to leave some of the brown showing through. And imagine like how, how bark looks. It's just random. We're gonna go back to these rocks over here. And grab your fan brush again. We're going to give this moss a little bit of highlights. So some green, yellow, and white. And you want this color to be pretty light. Kind of like a pale lime green. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in some fog. Now I'm just going to use this big blender brush I have. I got it from Michael's. Um, this is like one of the best brushes I've ever had. It's really useful in a lot of things. And I'm just going to tap in the background wherever I want it to look foggy. And you want to just barely get the tips of the bristles with paint on them. You don't want it to be oversaturated with paint because it'll just look blobby. You want it to be this really delicate spray of paint. I'm going to add in a couple of little sticks down here. Just some brown color.
That looks pretty good. So let's do some more work on this tree. So again, I'm gonna get my fan brush. And kind of a light green color. Yellow mixed with a light green. Add, add a little bit of white. down here than it is at the top. So we're going to start down here. And you kind of want to get it on these bark pieces that we made. So kind of try to highlight those just like we did the mounds. So we're going to start on the bear and make sure you are able to see where you have them all sketched out and we're just going to start filling in parts with the base color. So the base color is the darkest color of the fur or the piece that you're doing. So for the ears, the darkest color is black. I'm going to fill in most of the ear with black and the other one, same thing. Okay. And then this side of his face is in a shadow. So this side's going to be pretty dark. So we're going to fill all this in with black too. So what we're going to do now is take some black and add in a little bit of blue and a tiny bit of white. So you're going to get kind of a very, very dark bluish gray color. It's just going to be barely lighter than this black that we just put down. And you're just going to fill in all the other spots with this.
So around this snout right here, we're gonna do kind of a dark brown color. And on the other side as well. And then down along the bottom. This is just dark brown and a little bit of red and some white mixed in. Now up here, we're going to do red and black mixed together across the top of his snout. And we're just blocking in basic colors right now. We're not worrying about blending or about the fur, anything like that. So once you have all those filled in, then we're gonna do the nose which is a little bit of a lighter brown with some red in it. And just don't fill in the nostrils yet. So the eyes are a little bit tricky. I'm gonna take your detail brush, really thin detail brush here, and we are going to fill in the whites of the eyes, um, which are actually not gonna be white, they're gonna be gray because it's in a shadow. So it's just kind of like around the eyeball. And don't worry, if you get some on the outside, we can go over it again. So kind of like that. And then next you're going to fill in the middle of the eye, his eyeball, with just straight black for now. We're going to go back and add some detail to that a little bit later. I'm going to do the other side, same thing. Don't worry if it looks funny right now. Okay, so and around the eyes, it's going to be pretty dark black because this is like shadowing from his brow bones and stuff. So let's start on some of the fur. What we're gonna do is a gray with some blue. 
So it's black, white, and blue mixed together. And the first one you're gonna to wanna to do is pretty dark. So you're gonna use kind of a lot of black, a lot of blue, and a little bit of white. You're gonna get it really thinned out with your water or your linseed oil, whatever you're using. Use a really small detail brush like this. And we're just gonna start from the furthest point back. So the furthest part away on him is up here. And that's a, that's a little bit too dark because you can't see it. So I'm gonna lighten it up. That's a little bit better. So when you're doing fur an animal, you just really wanna pay attention to the direction that the fur is going. So his forehead fur goes this way, and then on the sides of his, hair, his body, they go this way. So you just always want to keep that in mind as you're making your brush strokes. And also the length of the hair is a really big deal. You don't want to do super long brush strokes on a bear because it's not very long hair. All right, so here we're gonna add some highlights to the outside of the ears. And I'm just using a little bit of a lighter gray blue color that we had before. And you're just gonna start from the base of the ear and use some short strokes and kind of follow around the edge until you get to the other side. You do want this color to be lighter than the other fur we've done before because this is where the sunlight would be hitting it the brightest. So here we're going to add in a little bit of longer strokes of a mixture of red, white, and brown. Now I'm going to take some black and kind of blend that color into his ear. Just some back and forth strokes where the two colors kind of mix together.
So now I'm going to grab some bright white and using the first strokes, short first strokes, we're going to outline some of the ears and the top of the head. As well as along the paws. So here all I'm doing is using a little bit of kind of a darker gray color to fill in the rest of his black parts of the fur. And what you want to do is you want the gray to just barely be lighter than the black that's underneath it. And you're going to use short fur strokes um, and your detail brush and leave some of the black showing through. Don't fill in the whole thing. And this is just a mixture of mostly black, a little bit of white, and a little bit of blue. You can add a touch more white to some of the parts that would be sticking up, such as where his belly is kind of laying and around the ridges of his thigh. But the parts that are closest to the tree are going to remain pretty dark. So now I'm going to add some low lights around the face, and this is just a black kind of watered down mixture so it spreads a little bit easier. And you're going to just follow along where the shadows would be um, along the brow bones of the bear, and then kind of around the eyes as well. And these are just short little strokes, trying to add in some depth and dimension to his face. You can add some to the ears if you'd like. Um, I kind of wanted mine to be a little bit darker than they were, so around the edges. And here I'm just adding some black, um, kind of spaced out quite a bit to give the fur a little bit more of a wet look. So this is, makes the fur look like it's clumped together in some parts. And down near the snout, you want it to be a little bit more dark because there's a shadow down there. I'm just going to kind of reshape the eyes a little bit. I'm going to add in some dark around the mouth. This is still all just black. I'm 
Don't worry if he looks a little bit funny right now. He'll look better, I promise. Now I'm just going to add in a little bit of lighter detail color um, around the edge of the stout. This is just a yellow and a white mixture on the other side too, kind of where like the light would be hitting it. Remember to follow the direction of the fur. So on this side the fur would be kind of going at a downward angle rather than how it was on the top it was going up straight up and down. This is kind of more of a sideways down. That makes sense. So if you're kind of lost and don't really know what this is supposed to look like, I really would um, So if you're kind of lost and don't really know what this is supposed to look like, I really would suggest that you download the finished bear. Um, I have images of it on my Facebook page and that way you can kind of see what it's supposed to end up looking like. It'll help you through the stages. All right, so here we are just doing a mixture of brown, red, and black, and a little bit of white. And just kind of lightly touching up the front part of the nose and a little bit in the nostrils. I'm going to leave the top portion a little bit lighter. Alright, so here just grabbing a little bit of white and red mixture, um, just a tiny bit of red, kind of highlighting where that light would be hitting the wet nose around the top and a little tiny bit in the middle. Just try to copy what I'm doing for now. Just adding a little bit more bright white on the sides because his nose is wet and it would kind of appear brighter over there. Bring in the edges a little bit and the highlight around the bottom. I'm just going to touch up some more of this fur over here, make it look more realistic. Add in some more highlights. This is that yellow white color. Okay, so up here on the top of the nose, um, we're gonna do some clumpy fur. Don't get your brush too wet or else it'll drip like that. Um, so these are kind of just like V shapes and it's gonna be a mixture of red white and brown. You want it to be a little bit lighter than the sides because up here would be reflecting quite a bit from the wet and the sun hitting it. And bring it up above and between the eyes just a little bit to kind of blend the two colors together. go back with e an even lighter color just add a touch more white and kind of blend it over the side a little bit just in those short short fur strokes it's 
So now I'm just grabbing bright white and I'm going to add in some really, really spaced out pieces on the top of his head. And this is again, this is going to help look, make it look like it's wet. Um, when fur is wet, it clumps together and it shines really brightly like that. So it kind of gives the illusion. So you can want to make sure you follow the direction of the fur. So give it a little bit of curve around the top of the eye and then straight up and down in the middle of the head like that. And as you get closer to the snout, it's kind of going to be less reflective. So you don't want to do too much down there. Kind of more towards the top of the head in the center. bit more on the outside here bringing some longer pieces in reflection along the ear that's all just bright white still okay so here we're gonna add a little bit of bright white as well um, just a little bit of reflection on the tips of the nose where they'd be you know, kind of round it up a bit. Okay, so here I'm just adding in some dark brown to the eyeballs, um, just right over the top of the black. And this is gonna be really subtle. You're not gonna be able to see it really brightly, but it's just gonna add a little bit more depth to his eyes. So you wanna leave kind of the top portion of the eyeball dark because there would be a shadow covering most of that brown. You can refill in the pupils if you want. Like I covered most of the pupil up on accident with brown. And you want the black pupil in the middle to be really showing. Okay, so I just grabbed some black and I'm going to go ahead and tighten up some of his snout. Um, I feel like it's a little bit too big for what I'm going for. I'm just kind of going over a little bit of that brown and making it look, appear to be a little bit smaller right over the top of it. So now I'm taking some more of that medium gray mixture we have and I'm just kind of going over the fur, uh, giving it a little bit more detail, kind of shaping the eyes a little bit more to get them how I'd like. And some more black along the bottom of the jaw there. There you go, that's looking a lot better. Sometimes you just have to make some tweaks here and there until it looks how you want it to. There's some more black up here, I'm adding some divots in the fur again. I'm going to kind of give his eyes a little bit more character and really give him a, a peak. Dogs and bears and lots of animals seem to have this little peak right above their eyeball and it gives them a lot of character in their face. taking a little bit of white and kind of going over again some of the highlighted spots on the nose. So here I have a mixture of kind of a really dark gray um, and we're just going to do like a little highlight on each of the eyes. And this is what really brings animals and people to life is that reflection in the eyes. I'm just blending a little bit of darker brown here on the side of the nose, give it more shadow. Kind of 
kind of along the front of the snout as well. It's taking that lighter color again and kind of blending those two together so they don't have a, as much of a seam. There you go. And on the, along the top as well. Just a light gray color again along the top, kind of just detailing some of the fur, adding some more bits in until I like it. Doing some more details along the eyes. I'm not gonna leave it like that, don't worry. <laughs> He looks funny. Sometimes you gotta add things in and then cover them up again to get the shape that you want. So there, there you go. So I'm using black to kind of reshape that portion that I just did. And I would suggest just playing around with the eyes a lot. Um, if it doesn't look quite right or if you stand back and he looks funny, just play around with kind of like the whites of the eyes and the eyeball shape and color and all of that. That'll help a lot. Just adding in a little bit more reflective fur on top of the snout. Just to kind of accentuate that it is sticking out forward and also that the sun is reflecting off of it. It's very subtle. So I'm going to go ahead and add in some more highlights around the outside of the body, so the shoulder, the elbow, and this is again just black, white, and blue, kind of a lighter shade than what we've been working with. Um, you want it to highlight where you think it's going to look like it's sticking up the furthest. Kind of longer strokes down here towards this bottom. So back to the face, and we're going to add in some yellow and white again. Um, I like to do this several times. If you're working with acrylic, you might not need to do this, but with oils, it kind of soaks in the color from beneath it. So I like to make it lighter and then go over it again a few minutes later, just to make sure that detail is really showing. So I'm going to add in some bright white dots here and I'm also going to blend them in so that they don't look quite so bright. So you just dry your brush off and get all the paint off of it and then you just smudge it again really quickly. Just like that. And it helps it look more realistic like a reflection.
Again, I'm just adding some more highlights and lowlights. Um, this is a darker red and, red and brown color around the top of the nose. And then I'm, I'm going to blend it in in just a minute. I'm still using my fine detail brush for all of this. Kind of bring that dark reddish color up into the nostrils a little bit. The nostrils aren't full on black. Um, it's going to look cartoony if you fill them all in with complete black. I'm just playing around with the shadows and stuff until I get it to look how I want it to look. Adding in some lighter grays again up here and some black. Um, you can play around with this too if you want. I'm just going back and forth and trying to get the depth of the fur that I want. So I'm adding in some, some black parts again. I'm probably going to redo the highlights as well. Fur takes many layers to get to look how you want it to look. It's kind of just something you have to practice for a long time to get the hang of. Something I'm still working on, definitely. Yeah, I just trimmed off a little bit of the snout that I didn't like. I kind of feel like it looks better now. Adding in some darker fur near the where the tree is. That's the furthest away from the sun, so it wouldn't be getting a lot of reflection there. A little bit of gray, kind of blend it all in better. That bright white was kind of sticking out too much for me just on the paw there. A little bit of a lighter color to kind of bring it all in together. Some swoopy back and forth fur motions. Once you kind of get the hang of your brush, you'll kind of understand more of how you get this look. Um, it's really soft and easy strokes. You don't want to press down hard at all. You just want the tip of the brush to barely touch the canvas. And again, just keep working. Um, add some darks, add some lights until you get it to look how you want it to look. I'm adding some more light up here, some bright white. Get that bumpy texture again. I kind of lost it before. I used a blender brush to blend everything in and kind of lost that bright white that I liked where it looks like it's wet. Around the edges a little bit, more definition. Okay, so we're going to add in his little claws, and all this is is a mixture of red and brown and white until you kind of get that color that I'm working with there. Um, you can play around with it a little bit. And this is kind of like the base color, so it's going to be pretty darkish. And then we're going to go ahead and add in some highlights right after that. Right along the top ridge, you're going to add in just some white and your, bl your brush should blend it in with the color beneath it pretty well if it's still wet. I'm just doing some touch up here where my fingers have been touching and smudging stuff. Okay, so now we're just going to add a little bit of moss in front of his body and paws and arms. And all this is is a little bit of green and white and yellow mixed together, that light green moss color we've done before. And you're just going to take your detail brush and kind of make these little curly cues, kind of like C's coming off of the tree. And that's just going to make it look more 3D, like he's behind the moss a little bit. So go all the way down to his legs and his belly and his feet. Okay. 
And now I just want to add a little bit more highlights again. Um, if you're working with acrylic, you probably won't have this problem, but my whites keep getting blended in with the colors beneath them, so I like to just go over them a couple times. I want the highlight to look really bright. That's the look I'm going for. So again, I'm just going around the edges with some bright white, um, the top of the head, the ears, side of the face, until I like how it looks. I'm using a lot of paint on my brush, so it's kind of thick here. And this is just that really small detail brush again. Short little strokes like you're doing for fur. Nothing too crazy. You don't want to do a line, like don't outline it because that'll look really bad. You definitely want to do the fur texture along the edge. You see short little strokes as I move down and follow the direction of the fur and that's going to make him really look like he has a glow coming from behind him. Down along the arm and along his back. That's about it for this piece. If you guys followed along with me, I'd love to see your finished paintings. Share them on social media and feel free to tag me. Also, please share this video so more people can enjoy it. And since this is my very first painting tutorial, I would love to hear your feedback about what I can do better next time, and also what you'd like to paint next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.